Good afternoon and welcome to the Canadian Housing and Renewal Association webinar, Closing the Gap on Tenant-Landlord Relations through Ready-to-Rent Certified Training. I'm Kristen Holinsky, Director, Programs and Strategic Initiatives at CHRA, and I'll be your host for today's webinar. Thank you all for joining us. Before we begin, I'll give a brief overview of the webinar technology, and I'll then introduce our agenda and speaker for this afternoon's presentation. Today's webinar is in real time. You should now be able to see a title screen of today's presentation and be able to hear me via your computer speakers, headset, or through your telephone if you've chosen to dial in. You're currently all muted, and we do this to minimize background noise. However, if you wish to ask a question, which we encourage you to do, you may do so by typing your question into the dialog box on the webinar control panel at any time during the presentation. We'll address as many questions as we can uh, at the end of the webinar. If at any point you're having problems with the technology, please call Melina Bouchard at the CHRA office. Her contact information is available in the text box on your screen, or she can reach at 613-594-3007, extension 19. You may also use the chat box at the bottom of your control panel to reach me. Moving on to the agenda for today, CHRA is pleased to have with us Christy Fairholm Matter, co-executive director of Ready to Rent BC. Today's webinar will focus on Ready to Rent BC's tenant education and certification model for the rental housing sector being expanded across BC and Canada. Ready to Rent is helping both landlords and tenants to build knowledge, skills, and awareness to accessing and maintaining housing and utilizes a train-the-trainer and community partnership approach to deliver high-quality, standardized education. This combination of education and support is demonstrating results in helping people with barriers to housing increase their housing stability. Today's webinar will address Ready to Rent BC's Rent Smart and Red Ed Education Certificate and Support Model for Housing Stability, R2R Program Launch and their Provincial and Canada Wide Pilot Initiative, as well as impact measurement and results to date. I now have the pleasure of introducing to you Christy Fairholm Matter, Co Executive Director of Ready to Rent BC. Christy has extensive experience in nonprofit and social enterprise sectors in both rural and urban communities. Her passion is working with organizations to innovate to create greater social impact. Prior to working with Ready to Rent BC, Christy was a director at Plan Lifetime Advocacy Network and previously program manager for social enterprise at Canadian Mental Health Association, Vancouver Burnaby. Christy also brings experience gained from 10 years with Red Cross's Respect ED Violence Prevention Program as a curriculum developer and master trainer in the field of homelessness prevention. Christy lives in Victoria with her husband and two children. So I'd now like to welcome Christy and turn the presentation over to you. Thank you so much for having me and thanks for everybody who uh, dialed in today. This is great. So I'm going to talk about Ready to Rent and talk about um, you know, how our model works and what we're seeing from our, our participants, uh, what the impact of, of education is having around housing stability, and then how people can be involved. So I usually start by asking people, you know, how did you learn to rent? You know, what was your first experience like? And when I ask that to a group of people, you know, the, the common questions or the common answers that come back are usually, you know, I've learned to rent from my parents, or I learned to rent uh, when I got into trouble. Um, and this is where we call, you know, crisis education. So people are, are going into the rental situation, they're going fine, they've learned, you know, some of the basic skills, um, and then when they get into trouble, they go and they, they look at, you know, what does the law say, or what does the rental education, not education, but what does the rental branch help them around dispute resolution and so on. And so we've really learned Sorry, getting myself organized. Here we go. We've learned, really learned that being a tenant is not an innate skill. You know, that being a tenant is a, is a series of skills that, that can be learned. They tend to be, you know, skills like how to look after a home and how to look after your money, you know, how to communicate well with people so that you can communicate with landlords, with neighbors, with roommates. Um, there are skills around learning and understanding your rights and responsibilities under the law as well as the, the responsibilities and expectations of landlords. They're around housing priorities and understanding your transportation needs and what you want and size of home. And, you know, there's, there's a number of different things that contribute to having, being a good tenant, and being a good tenant is key to housing stability. And so this is the approach that Ready to Rent has taken. Ready to Rent is taking an educational approach to addressing housing stability and preventing homelessness. And the vision is that there is community well-being through housing education and support. And it's, that, again, that idea that it's not just about preventing homelessness, but it's also around the benefits of housing stability. And when we look at people who are stably housed, there tends to be significant other life benefits. Employment, kids staying in the same schools, 
you know, we see connection to community, we see that contribution into community, we see that network of relationships that happen, and that feeling of safety and security. So there's both the prevention aspect and there's also the real benefit aspect. And so the model of change that, again, we use is specifically around education. Now this came out of um, an issue that happened, I'm sure that many of you are aware of, is that a number of people came together in 2009 in Victoria. And they noticed that women coming out of violent relationships are having a hard time getting rehoused. So they're coming into the transition house movement. And then they were facing barriers when they were trying to go into rental market housing. And so the issues that were specifically faced were lack of references or poor references, usually as a result of the relationship that they were coming out of. They maybe had poor credit or no credit at all, depending on their financial situation. And they were facing significant discrimination. And so when a group of people that recognized this barrier was happening decided to look around and say, what can we do about it? So looked at a variety of different models and then found the ready-to-rent model, which came out of Portland in the US. Went down, got the training, brought the education back up to Victoria, adapted it for the BC context, and then began to deliver it. And what we began to notice was a number of things. One is that um, the education was really effective in terms of helping people gain the skills and knowledge. And then when we added a certificate, and I'll explain a little bit more about our model in a moment. When we added our certificate, that certificate was actually beginning to reduce those barriers and bring down those barriers to housing and helping, helping the women be able to access the housing. So with this early success, there began to be other population groups and other service providers began to come and talk to Ready to Rent. And we recognized that there was a number of population groups and a number of people that faced these common barriers common barriers of lack of reference, poor credit or no credit, uh, and discrimination. And then on top of that, affordability. So that's where we found this expansion into other population groups, as well as we began to then notice that other communities were beginning to, to notice what was happening to Ready to Rent and, and what was happening within Victoria. So we began to get requests and demand from other communities across BC. So over the past two years, we re-looked at our model and found, okay, so if people are beginning to to demand and want to learn about what we're learning and also be able to learn from the, the seven years of honing this education model, uh, how can we share that and how can we share that across the community? And we're doing that in BC and, and now beginning to expand to Alberta. So I'm going to talk a bit about our model in particular. So we look at the big picture and, and the big picture of the goal of what we're trying to do with Ready to Rent is to, is to provide and to support successful tenancies. And so we see that landlords have, you know, they want members, they want renters to pay their rent, to respect their neighbors, and to look after the property. And that renters want a safe and affordable home to live in that is taken care of their landlord. So these are really symbiotic goals. What landlords and tenants are ultimately the same thing. The challenge that we see is that there is an issue of unstable housing. And that unstable housing has both what tenants are experiencing, what landlords experience, and then the impact on society in general. And each of these groups, I would say tenants, landlords, and society, all face slightly different challenges. So, I'll put a little picture up here. The challenge for tenants. So the challenge for tenants is finding the housing. So that first of getting into homes. And this is, they might be new to, to being a, a renter in that you can see that same lack of references, poor credit, you know, discrimination. We really see that this really impacts youth. Um, it also impacts newcomers to Canada who are facing these, these common barriers or returning to renting. So people who may have been renting but have gaps in their rental history, maybe as a result of being in, in receiving mental health supports or maybe in corrections or maybe you know in, in other big life transitions, kids coming out of care, those sort of things where you're seeing people coming from systems and out to renting and then don't have the benefit of a rental history or credit or so on. So we're seeing that that finding to housing. They may have had poor past experiences as a, as a tenant um, they may be facing a, a discrimination and they may be disqualified from regular application processes. In terms of keeping their housing, there is a challenge in people not knowing their rights and responsibilities and lacking the skills and experience in order to be good tenants. And the desire is to avoid evictions. And we know that the majority of evictions that occur are evictions not, um, are not because of willful or malicious damages or so on. Most of them are illegal evictions which specifically target low income tenants tend to be more at risk of illegal evictions um, or evictions for other reasons such as rent evictions or, or houses being sold or so on. But again having those skills so that they can be good tenants and avoid that, that aspect of, of eviction risk. 
and that we see that tenants are facing increasing costs and that the moves and evictions are costly. The challenge for landlords is finding tenants. So rental applications only, to, only tell them much, right? So it does tell them some of those references and it does tell them some of those credit text, checks, but they also have, when especially in high competitive markets, uh, there's a challenge in being able to understand who is a reliable tenant. So one thing that Rent Smart provides and that Ready to Rent provides is a certificate that says, you know, the people who come up and have the certificate, they're people who have taken 12 hours to learn the skills and how to be a good tenant. And so that's what we can we can provide some sort of measure of, of landlords is that they know that people have made the investment into being a good tenant. They also, tenant turnover is costly and time consuming for landlords and that the convenient, there's a lack of a convenient process for conflicts and disputes. So I'm not sure what it's like in the rest of the country, but in BC it's about a six month wait to go to residential tenancy branch to get your dispute heard. So if there's issues that come up, it is, it is uh, a length of time to resolve them. And so again, when we talk about prevention, we want to stop issues from happening before they happen or provide people with the skills and knowledge in order to address issues up front. And also for landlords, housing expenses are high and increasing. And then for society, there's a, a number of challenges that are faced or are caused by housing instability. We know homelessness is a big issue and potentially a growing one. The challenges to families and to communities around unstable housing, the lack of affordability that's out there, discrimination that, that's, that impacts a, a number of population groups. Um, there's overburdened community organizations that are working really hard to provide supports and to provide um, capacity to people in order to maintain their housing. There's increased costs as well. And, and then we see reactive responses such as tent cities or so on. So a number of challenges that we see faced by tenants, by landlords, and by society. And so there's a number of solutions that can happen or, uh, to, to solve these challenges, but the one that obviously I'm here to talk about today is the solution of ready to rent and how we're trying to do our part in solving those challenges. So ready to rent uses the educational and support model and we have a certificate backed course that that it does the bulk of our heavy lifting. So when you look at this you can see this is this is what we offer. So we offer um, at the very bottom we have rent ready and these are the rent ready introductory courses and these are three hour courses that we've made to be population specific. So we noticed in our in our Rent Smart course, which is our, our big course, that we had seniors and youth in the same course, and that's great. There's lots that people learn from each other. But we also noticed that when we talked about financial literacy, that it was very different for youth than it was for seniors in terms of what they needed to know. So we began to use Rent Ready as an opportunity to look at what are the population-specific needs that we can tailor curriculum specifically to meet them. So we started with youth and we have an initiative, we started with a youth initiative of youth specifically coming out of care. And so there's a three hour course that talks about what are the three keys to success specifically for that population group. And then we've done one that uh, specifically for refugees, which was, which was really illuminating and, and interesting. We, you know, we, we look at research and we find out what's happening around, around them and, and what's the specific barriers that they're facing to housing. And we found that when we did our pilots with with newcomers to Canada is that one of the barriers to, to housing was smoking. So we had spent 45 minutes talking to their, our group and piloting ways to begin to talk about housing and how smoking becomes a barrier. And it's a barrier because as soon as you on your application form say, yes, I smoke, people, you know, get moved to the side. So we begin to talk to them about, okay, so you need to be able to mitigate and have the conversation about smoking, find out where can you smoke, you know, even begin to talk about smoking cessation, but to remove smoking as a barrier to housing. Right. So we did one for people with mental health and addictions who are coming out of uh, out of homelessness into shelters, and it's a bit more of a pre-housing readiness uh, course. And then another one that we, that we piloted is around seniors. So if you move up, you can see we have the Rent Smart course, and this is a six-module, twelve-hour course that people take, usually over a six-week period. And at the end of it, they graduate and they receive a Rent Smart certificate. And then that rent smart certificate is recognized by by landlords and by housing providers. So in BC, BC Housing recognized the rent smart certificate in lieu of a reference and as two years good rental history. And then we have a number of other housing providers that have that same recognition. It adds points to their application so that people get recognized for that. 
um, and increasingly with private landlords, uh, with, with tend to be you know the landlords and large property managers. So and then we also provide walk with coaching support. So for the people who graduate, they we provide them um, solution fo focused coaching to help them solve their housing issues as they arrive. And again, the goal is to say, okay, let's apply the education. We know when we talk about communication and conflict, let's go back to that communication and conflict templates and how are we going to work through and talk to your landlord, talk to your roommate, talk to your neighbor to solve the problem where it is. Um, and our goal is again to, to advise them when they need to go to dispute resolution, absolutely, and when the law is being contravened. But also there's a lot of solutions that can happen that are in the interpersonal space. So how do we strengthen the relationship? How do we help create the solution so that people can stay housed? And then finally at the top we have Rent Ed, and this is a professional development course for landlords that's being piloted. And again, it's in response to our community partners that have said, you know, we have a number of landlord networks that we're working with, and we need to find a way to educate them, not only to be good landlords, but also to be good landlords for the, for the people that we are trying to support to, to find and stay housed. And so we've developed a, a professional development course that's specifically around that. It looks at tenant empathy, understanding where people come from, looking at the application process and what parts of the application process is, is, can create barriers to people and how to understand other ways to determine if someone's a good tenant and then also to have landlords really understand their responsibilities as a landlord. So you can see that Rent Smart, when we look at that, that core course and program that we do, is that provides support successful tenancy by providing educated tenants and landlords and that we talk a lot about building common language, common frameworks, common understanding between tenant and landlord so that they have, have a basis from which to, to build a, a good relationship with. Um, we have a Rent Smart certificate and that recognition from landlords as well as we find that the Rent Smart certificate really gives our participants, our graduates, confidence when they go out to to apply. So it lets them be able to say, you know, I am a good tenant or I am a reliable tenant and somebody who's taken the time to become educated on how to be a good tenant and that in itself provides a, a measure of confidence to folks. And then we provide that walk with supports. So we did a literature review about a year ago that really looked at what are, what are the pieces of prevention education that are really key to include in terms of preventing homelessness and increasing housing stability. And so we looked at what, what other prevention education approaches were, but we also looked specifically at what were the risks to housing stability. And so, and, and I'll talk through a bit of this graphic a bit more, but the result of that is that we went back to our education and we looked at each piece of our education to ensure that our education was, was building the competencies and the capacity specifically for housing education. So for an example, we used to do a financial literacy component that was quite broad. It was, you know, wide financial literacy. After we, we looked a little bit deeper at the pieces of financial literacy that are required for people to be housing, we st for required for housing stability, we, we tweaked and we shifted our curriculum to focus specifically on, on financial literacy for housing stability. So what's required for people to pay their rent in time, in full, to stay housed. So this is the example. So when we looked at at what are the big barriers for, for housing and getting into housing. It's affordability, lack of references, poor credit, and discrimination. So in our education, we address all four of those. We talk about affordability all throughout our course and ways that people can increase their affordability, ways that they can reduce their expenses, um, how to manage roommates, all the kind of stuff that goes towards affordability. And the beauty of being in a classroom is that we find that people who are in the classroom are experts in this. And so there's an opportunity for people to share what's happening in community, what are the community resources, and what are all the ways that they increase their affordability. We talk about those lack of references, so we build out a good, people come out with a strong reference list, and who are those references, who makes a good reference, who doesn't, you know, walking them through how to ask someone to be a reference and how to prepare the references. We go back and help people to address poor credit or to build credit, and we talk about discrimination. And we talk about discrimination, and again, having that certificate, the biggest feedback, or one of the feedback that we get from our property managers and from our housing providers that recognize the certificate is that the certificate has them look twice at people that they might not have looked at before. And so we find that that certificate is a really strong tool in beginning to reduce discrimination. On the other side, 
the preventing housing instability, these are the reasons why people tend to lose their housing from what we saw in the research. Is one is illegal evictions. So we do a lot around what's it be, having people be able to recognize what is a legal eviction and what is an illegal eviction. And our education really takes an application approach. So we do education and then we quickly have people apply and practice. So this, this one lays out, okay, here's three different eviction notice. Look through them, find out which one is illegal, which two are illegal, and which, one's which one is legal, and we have a conversation to have them to be able to identify and see and look for the things that make something legal. Rental arrears, another reason why people lose their housing is not paying their rent on time and in full. So we spend a lot of time in our financial literacy about achieving that goal. We talk about damages. Our module six is all around taking care of property and how to prevent damages and what to do if damages occur. And we find that, again, people, damages tend to occur because, mm, you know, maybe they leave their rice cooker under their cabinetry and the steam comes up and begins to rot the cabinetry. So it's talking through those things. That what can you do to prevent your, prevent damages? How do you prevent pests? How do you keep your house clean? How do you have safety? How do you prevent fires? All that kind of stuff. And then the other one is conflict. Conflict between landlords, conflict between roommates, conflict between neighbors is another reason why people can lose their housing. So we spend a full module on effective communication, but also communication through conflict and provide people with tools as well as a template to follow. So we really provide templates, practice, it's practical, it's relevant, and it's, it's specifically geared to reducing barriers to getting into housing and then helping people stay housed. And when we look at that bottom one, the blue, the green, and the orange, we find that housing stability is based on knowledge, so people are understanding their rights and responsibilities and what their requirements are to be a tenant and what their landlord's requirements are, the financial management of their day-to-day, -day, and then providing support. You know, and we provide walk with supports, but also a majority of our community educators or community educators also provide significant support. And when we talk about support, as we say, you know, education is relevant to everybody. For some people, they will need education and support, and for some people, they'll need education and significant support. So, and when we talk about support, we also talk about you know supports that happen in the community, informal supports, supports that they have within their own networks, um, and as well as the ready-to-rent walk with supports. So, who takes our education? We again, we say anybody who wants to be a, a more successful tenant could take our education. Ready to Rent focuses specifically on people who are either new tenants or new renters, um, and that's where we talk about immigrant refugees, youth coming out of care. Um, we find that you know, for Indigenous or First Nations people coming off reserve into urban centers or into new communities, often renting is a new experience. So it's that new renter piece, as well as people who are coming out of life transitions. So people who are coming maybe out of mental health, leaving corrections, you know, maybe seniors, we have an increasing amount of seniors who are maybe renting for the first time in a long time or are beginning to have a different kind of housing situation based on the supports that they require. And the RentSmart course is that 12-hour course that goes over six weeks and we cover the following, tenant rights and responsibilities, landlord responsibilities and expectations, and we do a, a real piece around understanding the landlord experience or building landlord empathy so that it, it, we're breaking down that idea that this is somebody who has a lot of power but is somebody who has a lot of care for their property, right? So it's beginning to build that empathy and, and create an understanding of the other perspective. We do budgeting and planning for housing affordability and, stable, and stability. We do quite a lot around living with roommates, housemates, and that relationship with neighbors. Um, specifically, as we're seeing more and more people address housing affordability by shared living accommodation situations. So it's beginning to set up that relationship for success, and then what do you do if there's issues that occur? We talk a lot about effective communication skills. We do maintenance, do's and don'ts on how to take care of your property, and then crisis management and safety and pests. So one of the things that's really fun is we get the fire, local fire department come in, they usually light a fire and then they put it out. <laughs> and so everyone loves that. Um, and uh, and it's really important on, in terms of finding and maintaining safety at home. So we see that there's the solutions back to the, the solutions of educated tenants and landlords. We see that that's a solution for a number of the big issues. It's a solution for rental arrears, it reduces conflicts, it increases the legality of tenancies, it can reduce evictions and, and tenancy turnover, 
um, and it can it can reduce damages, unintentional damages to property. We also find that when we have educated tenants, they're able to to ask or communicate more effectively with their landlords around maintain, maintenance of that home. So when tenants are advocating for the maintenance of their home, then the units tend to be increasingly uh, getting in, in better shape if that landlord is following the law as well. So, and, and we talk about the benefits for tenants is that they build these skills, knowledge, and confidence in order to be a good tenant. And so, you know, the skills and the knowledge is really, you know, it's easy to look at, you know, we deliver curriculum and education, it builds those skills and knowledge, and then underlying it, we really see and we measure what is the level of confidence that people are beginning to experience. You know, again, because people sometimes, a lot of people experience or, or feel that there's a power dynamic between themselves and the, t and the landlord, that when we start going through the law and we start saying, actually, this law exists to begin to equalize that power, and that you have these rights as a, as a tenant and they're, they're enshrined in law, that that begins to give them the confidence to be able to, to ask for repairs, to ask for maintenance, to bring up issues as they come. Um, and that, that piece of confidence is really key in terms of them having stable housing and living in a good home. So the RentSmart certificate, we find that it is a solution around selection of tenants and giving people application confidence. It can level the playing field in terms of that second look that we're seeing is happening and it can act as a reference and that depends on the relationship that that is created in the community so in Victoria lots of landlords recognize as a, as a reference as we grow throughout uh, BC we find that again it's that work of, of having um, reaching out into landlord networks and saying you know this is a certificate that you'll begin to see that coming that lets, be, lets you know that this person has, a, has invested their time and energy into becoming a good tenant um, and that kind of grows um, both through partnerships as well as somewhat organically and it also can help in high competition in tight markets. So again, it allows it allows our folks to have a bit of that confidence to say yes, like I have something else that that will make me stand out. And then the Walk with Supports provides that go-to place for tenants and landlords to have problem-solving conversations. And again, we use a coaching model, so it's really solutions-focused and provide connection to community resources. Our goal is a reduction in crisis moves. We want housing. Sometimes it just isn't a fit, right? So we want to have people to be able to to make a different choice if they need to move and to move without crisis instead of waiting for eviction or waiting until something else happens and then it's moving under distress. And so again, it's beginning to reduce and allow people to understand where their choices are. There's a little visual around there we go. So since uh, since 2009, we can see where our participants, we've had over 2,000 coming up to 2,500. These are from the summer and, and works going quite quickly. Um, 2,500 rent smart participants to date or ready to rent participants to date. And you can see that the rent ready is, it tends to be primarily youth. You don't see it by, by population group, but it's primarily youth because we're just adding those additional courses. So last year we did a third party evaluation of our program to find out how it was working. And we did a survey of our, our graduates that passed, you know, became graduates in the past year. So in Ready to Rent we do quite significant impact measurement and, and the way that our impact measurement goes is on our, our first module that we start off is that we give people sort of a demographic, we give people a demographic form to fill out. So who are you? Where are you from? How much income do you earn? How much do you pay for rent? You know, are you looking at housing transition? All that kind of stuff that lets me let us know where, where people are at. And then at the end of the courses, we do, you know, we do a quality management or a quality evaluation. How was the course? What do you remember from it? What's one behavior that you're going to change as a result of taking the course? What are your next steps in finding or keeping your housing? And so we really, you know, we, we focus on the quality of the course as well as understanding what might have changed for people when they came out of the course. What we weren't able to really understand is what was the impact in, in actually people coming and taking the course and then a year later were they able to find and keep housing, you know, that longer term impact. So we, we had the third party evaluator come and do a survey and then follow up that survey with in-person interviews and then follow as well as partner, partner community educator interviews. So what we found 
And we had a fairly good response to our survey. We had a 28% response rate to our survey of, of graduates the year previous. And then when the follow-up in-person interviews really echoed and, and solidified the findings from our, our survey, our internet survey. So what we found is 100% of the people who were surveyed said that their knowledge increased as a result of taking the Red Smart course, and that 92% said their confidence increased. And again, that's, that's a really important one. 86% said that maintaining their house was easier as a result of the course, and that 72% said finding a place to rent was easier as a result of taking the course. And then we asked, so did you use this, the Rent Smart certificate when you were finding housing? And 66% of our participants used the Rent Smart certificate, and 70% of them said it directly helped them secure their housing. So we found that this was really, really significant impact that was beginning to create by combining education and the certificate in terms of helping people find and maintain housing. We also really wanted to understand how do we fit within a prevention education model. So our goal is to increase housing stability, to decrease and prevent homelessness. And so we looked around at what are the different aspects of prevention that are required in, in terms of the literature. And we found that you know there's primary prevention, there's secondary prevention, there's tertiary prevention. These are three levels of prevention. And we do have our lit review and these models on our website, so you're welcome to go in and download and read the, read the lit review, look at, at this for a bit, more, um, a bit more information and background information. But what we found is that ready to rent kind of spans all three levels of, of prevention, and that education is really you know, integrated into, into these levels. So you can see in tertiary prevention, that life skills training, financial management courses, and so on, is is really key that landlord education providing supports you know again that mediation we don't do mediation per se but what we do is we provide that walk with supports that can help people to have healthy and effective conversations with their landlords or vice versa um, we find that you know tenant education on rights and responsibilities is really important in terms of a targeted strategy and that population based strategy and that anti discrimination is key so we found that our model is beginning to span quite a few aspects um, quite a few proven effective aspects of, of homelessness prevention. So we're growing. So this is where we are. And again, most of these snapshots that I'm taking are coming off our website. So we have quite open data. So you can go and poke around. You can see where our courses are being scheduled. You can see who our community educators are. You can see where we are and how we're growing, as well as the some of the impact data that we're collecting. So. I encourage you to, to poke around and then if you have any questions or thoughts you can always contact us and we'd love to have the conversation more. You can see that we're growing and we're growing through a community educator model. So this is our community, this is a list of some of our community educators and I couldn't take the whole, I couldn't get a, a full snapshot but we have about 120 community educators. Next week I'm doing another train the trainer, another 19 organizations are coming to be trained to use ready to rent. And we found that when we re-looked at our model and we were getting demand from you know, different population groups as well as different community organizations and, and geographics, geography is that we, we weren't able to meet the demand based on us training trainers and sending our trainers out to run courses. That's just not a very scalable model. So we switched it to you know, uh, using something similar to the Red Cross First Aid model where we're training community organizations to deliver the education as they want, when they want, to their population groups, and that Ready to Rent maintains the standards and develops the curriculum and holds the certificate. So we're the certifying body of graduates, and we're also the certifying body for community educators. So how it works is that we run Train the Trainer, which is a four-day training course that teaches people how to how to break down the curriculum, how to and and teach it into community, and we. People teach people how to run Rent Smart, how to run Rent Ready, how to run Rent Ed, um, all of those courses. And, and also, we do a lot around facilitation skills, adult education principles, transformative training. We really use a transformative training model. And, and then how to deliver it. And certified community educators are required to take the train the trainer and to deliver two courses annually. So that's part of the agreement that we have. And that those are certified community educators or facilitators for three years and then every we'd like to see people and we'd like to have a reconnection so we do an annual recertification. There's a fee for manual and certificates and that ready to rent maintains that certifying body for facilitators and graduates. 
it's really important in terms of developing common standards and we do have a standard for graduation we have a standard for educators um, and it also really helps when we have common standards around our education as well as common standards around our branding you know we want to be able to have this kind of branding be relevant and and transferable from community to community right so that when people are moving from Prince George to Victoria that that rent smart certificate can go with them you know people are mobile so um, being able to have something that begins to be widely recognized and supports people wherever they are uh, is really key. And then the other thing that we do that is part of our community that's building this network of community educators is that we use the common measurement and evaluation tools. So everybody uses that, that uh, initial assessment or demographic profile of people. We do that at the end evaluation, course evaluation, how was it? And then we do that annual participant survey. And so our systems are set up so all our community educators upload that data into one common system. In the four-day train the trainer our course covers prevention and housing stability, the theory, the models, what's working, what we're hearing from the research. We do a curriculum review of all the curriculums and we have people very quickly teach the course. So it's not a, it's not, none of the ready to rent courses. Our education is based on a lecture style. We are really into, um, again, that transformative training model where we have people very quickly learn and then apply. So the same as in the Train the Trainer, people are learning this is the curriculum and then right away they're in learning pods and teaching pods and they're facilitating the curriculum to each other so that they're becoming really uh, familiar and comfortable. We talk a lot about key facilitation and education educator skills so that people are effective educators um, and that people find to be really, really beneficial not only in delivering ready to rent Course, uh, courses but also in other areas of their job and then that adult education principles and transformative training. We're building this network of community educators and right now I said as we said we have about 120 that are across BC and we are building a common we're trying to build a stronger communication portals between this network I mean a lot of folks are doing amazing on the ground work and supporting people to, to find and keep their housing and so we have an opportunity to share those best practices or those emerging practices with each other. And we do that in a few different ways. So we have bi-monthly webinars where we take different, different things that people are doing within the network where we talk about the latest research that's coming up or sometimes we'll say, I did one last week on affordability and said, okay, so what is our response to affordability as, as ready to rent and within our curriculum as well as within our network? And so we had an opportunity to have a conversation about that. We do bi-monthly newsletters. We do collective impact measurement. We carry that strong brand and standards. We have BC-wide support in terms of that recognition of the certificate. And hopefully as we expand into other provinces or are invited into other provinces, that we have um, that, that support continues to grow both with the community organizations and systems as well as the landlords. And then a, a really strong network and movement that begins to talk about prevention. You know, we have a lot of, of amazing work that's done around intervention and um, and we advocate really strongly for for moving upstream and having people you know, learn the skills, find good housing, and then stay housed. One thing that's really important about our model is that it's, it's never mandated, that we don't ever mandate the education. So when people take Rent Smart, uh, that it needs to be voluntary. They need to show up on their own. They need to, you know, they need to have that act of saying, yes, I want to be educated, and I'm going to have free choice if I make it all the way through. And we find that that's a really key aspect in terms of maintaining our standards. Um, and the other thing as well is with community educators is that we have a, when we do the TTT, that is community educators are, our organizations have voluntarily been interested and want to become, learn the model and send their staff and, and commit to beginning to deliver courses. So again, it's not something that we would, we would, recommend be mandated for anybody to come and take our train the trainer or to adopt the model but that it's it's based out of invitation and as part of invitation as well is that we go where we're invited so all of our all of our expansion and growth has been because someone in a community or someone in a province has said you know I, I think that this fills a gap in what we have currently uh, we'd like to build on your expertise and your knowledge and and what you've learned over the past years and try to to adopt and adapt that model to our local context and when we're invited then we'll go but we won't we won't turn up unless <laughs> unless we are invited so that's another important aspect of our model is you know those those parts around 
uh, people's choice, around people um, you know, engaging in the learning experience, and around invitation. So I want to end with just, this isn't a picture of me, this is one of our facilitators uh, and this is one of our youth groups and they're taking the Rent Ready course in our pilot phase and, and took some pictures but we just wanted to say thank you so much. This is uh, readytorentbc.org is our website. So we are, we are launching Rent Smart Online which is that other website that you see which is great, Get Rent Smart so that's available to people across BC who want to take the, take the Rent Smart course in an online fashion. Um, and then we also still, with our model deliver, will continue to really believe in the power of education, both in person and online, to create change. So, thank you a lot, Christy. If you ever want to get in touch with me, I'm Christy Fairholm Mater, and there's our email, ed at readytorentbc.org. And I think that's my 45 minutes, and can open it up to any questions that people might have. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Christy, for that presentation and for sharing with us what you're doing out in BC with Ready to Rent. As Christy mentioned, we're, we're open to taking questions. We have another 15 minutes or so left, so please do type them in. Uh, there's a, on your control panel, there's a section where questions are, and um, you can type them in and we'll, we'll go ahead and ask Christy. Um, just to get us started, uh, we have a question asking about some of your, your graphics and some of what you've shown. So just to begin, within the next few days, CHRA will post uh, the Christy's PowerPoint presentation and this recording on the CHRA website. So you'll be able to come back into the webinar section of the website where you registered for this and you'll be able to see the materials. But in particular, Christy, we had a, a question about that wonderful uh, diagram that you showed on the primary, secondary, and tertiary renting interventions. Um, is that available on your website as well? It is. And we also have the lit review that backs that. So we have a lit review that, that focused on you know what are what are the levels of prevention that are happening around homelessness in in Canada or even in the literature? Uh, what currently exists, um, and then how does education play a role within prevention? So that was our interest as, as Ready to Rent being using an educational model. We really wanted to understand that, and we learned a lot from from that lit review. And I really thank the researchers who did that. It was BC Nonprofit Housing Association did that lit review for us, and one of the things that we learned significantly from that is they compared homelessness prevention to suicide prevention. So we looked at the best practices around suicide prevention and what has been effective at reducing suicides in other, in, in other communities in Canada and the United States primarily. And again, they found that education was a key aspect in, in reducing suicide. So we began to look at this other huge issue, which is homelessness that we're facing in our community. How do we begin to also integrate education to address that issue? And um, and we are seeing a lot being done on intervention education right now. People do do education, but it tends to be fragmented. It tends to be at organizational level, and it tends to not have uh, widely adopted standards. So that's the part that Ready to Rent is trying to bring or is bringing to the table is, you know, that that high standards, that best practice based education, that model that is scalable and adaptable to different communities, and a common branding that we all begin to use that respects the fact that from community to community and create a model that we'll be able to move with them. Great, thank you. We have a couple questions here coming in about uh, the fee per, for prospective tenants to go through the program and uh, the pricing for the TTT. Sure, so the tenants tend to not pay a fee, so what happens is community organizations take the TTT and that TTT is $500 and, and that's for the four-day training. There isn't an annual fee for community organizations. It's a it's a TTT fee, and then there will be a licensing not a licensing fee. There's a, a recertification fee. So every three years, when you turn up for that that one to two day training, there's a fee for that. And then the the manuals and certificates are twenty five dollars for a manual and certificate. So when people host a course, when community organizations host a course, they order those manuals and certificates from Ready to Rent. So that allows us to keep those manuals and certificates updated and current. So we do an annual update of our curriculum and our manuals to make sure that we're always at the we're always responding to the feedback from our participants and our community educators, and that our education is is always at the forefront of of where it needs to be in addressing the current issues that are happening in the in the rental and housing market. So that that's how our model works. We tried to make it pretty fee simple. 
um, and affordable for community organizations to offer. And then our community organizations tend to offer it to their population groups free of charge. So it begins to be integrated into their budget line items. Now we have had some community centers begin to turn up that are offering it on a fee-for-service basis to their communities because we recognize that some community members have lots of people who need to learn how to be good tenants. Not everybody, um, not everybody's low income or not everybody needs to be subsidized to take that course um, and we leave that up to communities to determine. But we do say that if people do want to offer it through like a community center model or open it up to community in a fee-for-service basis, that's up to the up to the community and we have a recommended price based on sort of looking at what other programs that are similar like you know Red Cross babysitter course that kind of thing and we have a recommended price but we also uh, don't don't say that this is how much it needs to cost it's really up to to the community great thank you we have a number of questions coming in people being very interested in the TTT and asking how can they get uh, get involved in in the courses one of the next courses how do you how are they available to people specific question about availability in Alberta as well yeah so we are starting in Alberta uh, we are just in the process of adapting curriculum for Alberta for the Alberta context and then TTTs will start being offered in Alberta um, and that I think is the process that we would have with any province is that we wait to be invited by a community organization or a partner who wants to um, be involved in the adaptation of the curriculum specifically for the legal framework and the community context of that province <clears throat> and then we begin to host TTTs. Uh, the BC TTTs we are right now holding them about once a month. We, like I said we have one in Victoria next week. They're selling out about a month early. Um, we have another one in October in Salt Spring. That one's also sold out so they're selling out quickly so we post them and if you're interested, you contact our office, we put you on the list, and then when our next one gets scheduled, we send it out and people can sign up. So I think we'll do one in Vancouver for sure in February. Um, and that's uh, those are the ones that I know about. I don't organize the TTTs. <laughs> so uh, it's Jess who's the person who coordinates all the TTTs and manages our community educator network. So essentially if people in BC or Alberta are interested, they can go on your website, but if they're at a province from there, it's to get in contact with you directly to ask more about bringing it into another province, is that right? That's right, that's right, to, to talk about, you know, is this something that would be useful in your province, and if so, then we have again a pretty straightforward process. We look at what that partnership would look like, um, we look at the adaptation of the materials, and then we start the TTT process. Great. Okay. So for those of you who are asking, because there's a lot of questions coming in about the process for, for bringing the program into, uh, say, Ontario, do get in touch with, with Christy and she can help direct you as to how to do that. And it looks like there's, there's quite a few people on this call today who are interested in it. So uh, we can also share some information. You can get in touch with me at CHRA. So that's Kristen at CHRA. And you can find my my email on on the website and I can also look at linking groups in certain regions uh, who are interested in this so please do get in touch with me and or Christy following this and we can link up interested organizations. Um, we have a, a couple other questions, we actually have quite a lot coming in. Um, sure. This one is, what's your experience working with individuals with mental illness? Are they able to get through the workshops? Yeah, so we found that people with mental illness were not able to get through the workshops. Um, well, it depends on where they are, right? I mean, there's lots of people who who come um, that are able to get to the workshops and have done great. Uh, we did find there was a certain uh, cohort of folks that were really struggling, especially if they were in transitionary housing. So I'd say, like, not transitionary housing in terms of the housing, but in terms of the life experience. So they were shifting, you know, usually through shelter systems or experiencing chronic or episodic homelessness or, or so on. And, um, and so we did this pilot with the health authority here in Victoria uh, specifically the people who are coming out of a tent city situation in Victoria and coming into temporary shelters and so we went and we did a focus group we talked to them we found out what's happening with their their perceptions of housing and and where they're at and we saw that there's need for almost like a pre housing education and so we adapted our curriculum to look at that again that three hours and sometimes we even did it two one and a half hour sessions where we talk about you know some of the pre-housing skills and it's a lot around I would say because trauma tends to be such a big issue with people who are that we, that we were working with that we were hearing from the people that we were in our focus groups is that it's really looking at safety and security and beginning to trust that housing 
situation to not um, to not test to, to to be able to access supports to be able to know where to get to supports to be able to you know it, it was a bit of a different approach so yeah so we did we did do that pilot we have got adaptation of curriculum and when you come through the the train the trainer we'll talk about the rent readies and we talk about what are the specific needs and what we learn from doing those pilots and then we have the curriculum pieces or the way that the course can be operated to meet the needs of that specific population group. And as I mentioned earlier, we have a rent ready specifically for youth coming out of care, uh, one for refugees and we did this one with Syrian refugees that was quite specific to those needs but we find that from our intercultural partners is that they're seeing that that is applying to other refugee groups and then mental health and addictions. Uh, has been where we've done the rent readies. The seniors one we did as well but I think we need to do a bit more of understanding really specifically the impact of cultural uh, I would say um, uh, competency and say contractual competency on housing because that begins to be an issue for for seniors as they as they age. So there's some areas that we're that we're still you know we're a learning organization so not only are we educating but we're also constantly learning from our participants and from our community partners and and working to to quickly adapt that into our curriculum and then send it out back through that community educator network. Great, thank you. Uh, another question here about um, your relationship with landlords and working with them. If you can talk a little bit more about how you engage and get buy-in for the program uh, from landlords and, and what the response has been in terms of the education opportunities offered to them. Yeah, so we're we're in our pilot process right now with landlords, and we find that what our response through landlords has been through our community partners, our community educator network tends to have their own networks of landlords that they work with at a community educator basis, at a, at a community basis. Sorry. So what they found is in response to those community educators, they're like, can we have can we have an education that we can deliver to our landlord networks that help them to understand how to access supports, understand our tenants, understand you know um, their roles as landlords and and so on. And from those existing networks, we find that that has been beneficiary, right? It's been beneficial to the community educators in having those conversations with landlords, and it's also been beneficial to landlords in terms of being able to to make that relationship with community partners as well as with their tenants be successful. So it's been really effective at, at that kind of targeted education that we're that we're doing and those are it is targeted to landlords who want to be part of the housing solution. So and, and in Victoria and in Vancouver some of those are, are large property managers. So they've got large they're large property managers that have relationships with community organizations and and are working towards you know housing people who may be facing barriers to housing. So what we don't do is we have not provided an education that is kind of broad brush landlord education. There's other landlord networks that that kind of that tend to provide that kind of education. Again, our education is focused on housing stability and and prevention of homelessness and connecting in through through the networks that exist. Now, if there is a need, if there is a, a landlord education and landlord network or um, a need for different kind of landlord education, then we would be responsive to those needs. Uh, currently, our landlord education has been responsive to the needs that have been expressed to us through our community educator network. Thank you. Again, just for those of you who are still on the line, there's a lot of interest from organizations in Ontario in getting the, the TTT training, um, as well as Alberta. So what I'm going to do is send out an email to everybody on this call following the webinar. And if you can respond to that directly to me, if you're interested, and we can gather those uh, within a region who are interested so that we can coordinate uh, getting in touch with, with Christy, because there's quite a lot of interest here, which is fantastic to see. Uh, just a couple more questions for you, Christy. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's one here about uh, asking, do certificates ever get rescinded? Uh, we haven't rescinded a certificate. What we will do is sometimes we don't graduate people, right? So our standards for graduation are, is that, are that people turn up, they take all six modules, that they're actively engaged in the, the learning experience, um, if we see, I mean, the, the way that the education works is that there's quite a lot of conversation, so you have a, a pretty good understanding as a community educator as to where people are at in their housing. Um, and we have had 
sometimes a community educator has gone to somebody and said, you know, I don't know if this is a fit for you right now. I don't think that, that you're quite ready. Let's look at additional or other support that we could have. So we really trust our community educators to maintain the standards and to in, ensure that people are learning. Um, but we haven't had the need to rescind anyone's certificate from from what I've from no we haven't um, and that is what we and then again it's what we're offering is that what we say is that we when people turn up is that it's a it's a mark and it's a it's evidence that somebody has taken that that time and investment to educate themselves on how to be a good tenant. Um, does that mean that they're always a perfect tenant? No. Does it mean that they'll not ever experience challenges? No. You know, it's that it's those understanding you know, that that it's that intention and interest in educated tenant that's turning up, and that for some people they will still require supports, and for other people that education is enough. Um, and luckily, through our community educator network, there is that aspect of community-based supports that exist, as well as what we provide in terms of our walk with supports. What we do have is we do have landlords call us up and ask us, is this person uh, who's applied to my uh, to my housing really a, a rent smart graduate? And then we look at our database and we verify whether or not they're a graduate. And we can say, oh yeah, they graduated in Vancouver at this time. Uh, so we can do that. And we do get calls from landlords around that. Um, and sometimes we get calls from landlords saying, you know, I'm struggling with my tenant who is a rent smart graduate um, and they've given me permission to call it, you know, what's the solution? And so we, again, we help with some of that problem solving to, to find uh, to find a solution to, to help people either have a crisis free move or to, to stay in their home. Great, thank you. Uh, can you let us know again who the third party evaluator was that you referred to? Her name is Trudy Norman. She was a researcher with University of Victoria. Okay, thank you. And um, what, what's your role in, in encouraging cities and organizations to invest in, in affordable housing programs? Is that something you're involved in at all? We're starting we're starting to be more involved in that. What we've discovered, you know, it's, it's, it's these learning models, right? What we've discovered is that as we've scaled our model into something that's that's adaptable and works in different communities is that and, and part of, we're all becoming part of a pretty strong network. Uh, a pretty strong network of community organizations and, and systems because we have systems beginning to turn up, right? Corrections is, is turning up and taking the TTT with federal government. Federal Corrections is now delivering education. We're having, you know, the family development is turning up. So we're beginning to see systems begin to turn up and want to be involved. So we're beginning to say this is sort of a, we're creating a bit of a base understanding of what prevention looks like um, and we're creating some common capacities and common conversations that then it's looking at how do we as a network, as a growing network, begin to make that next step around advocating or I'd say, you know, working with our partners to be able to say, you know, market and non-market rental housing is really, really key and we're seeing that there's a crisis beginning to happen. And I don't know what it's like in other provinces, but in BC I'd say we're in, a, we're, we're in an increasing crisis around rental housing. <clears throat> and these are what we're hearing are successful and best practices in the communities. And this is what we're hearing from our community educator network around what could be done to fill some of those gaps. And so Ready to Rent is looking at how we sort of harness the voices of that network uh, to create a stronger voice for, for prevention and a stronger voice for, for renters. I mean, there, there are some voices, but I would say that there needs to be a stronger voice uh, for renters. And at the same time, we have 2,000 graduates, and we have 2,000 graduates that are in our network and we're also looking at, at mobilizing and how do we build a stronger support network among those graduates so that they're supporting each other around their housing. So one of the most powerful things around around our model is that at the end when people graduate we say you know you're a graduate but also now you're a rent smart ambassador. So when you go out into the community and you get housed and you maintain your housing, your housing success opens the door for the next rent smart graduate. And we're your reference but you're also our reference. And that sense of reciprocity and common purpose and that, that feeling of their success right away benefiting someone else is actually a really powerful motivator um, that we hear people feel really proud about. And so I think our next step as, a, as an organization is also to say, you know, we have, we have a number of, of powerful graduate advocates who have been very successful who are there and looking at ways of, of mobilizing them to create a stronger support, peer-to-peer -peer support network. So we're looking at peer-to-peer -peer tech support, we're looking at 
peer-to-peer -peer, um, walk with supports and how to strengthen that, that network as well. Great, thank you. We have a question about the, the literature review again and, and getting the precise link. Some people were having trouble locating it on the okay. website. So maybe, yeah, if Christy, you can send that to me. And when I send out that follow-up email, I'll include that link so that you all have access to it. Uh, several questions again on, on um, Christy, if you're able to share um, when there's the training next in Alberta in particular, are you aware of that? I think it will probably be set for the new year. I know there people are wanting to move fairly quickly. Uh, I'm I'm not entirely sure because we're in the process of updating the curriculum. But I think once that curriculum's update updated, we'll set a, a train the trainer and and then send out the information. And I think it will be in Edmonton, is where we'll we'll start that that train the trainer. Wonderful, thank you. Well, as I said, we got I'm quite a lot of. Hedging. I'm only hedging because I don't. I don't organize those, so I don't want to, <laughs> so I don't want to step on Jesse's toes yeah. and give incorrect information. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Well, uh, that's about all the time we have for today. So I'm going to thank you very much, Christy, for, for sharing this information with us. We had a great response and um, well over uh, 50, close to over 60 actually at the mark people were on the call today. Uh, so thank you very much for taking the time to share with us the work you're doing with Ready to Rent BC and about the opportunity to expand outside. And as I said, I will send a follow-up email following this webinar to those who are on the call. And if you're interested, uh, please get in touch. And what I can do is I can connect those organizations within a region uh, who are interested in the TTT model together so that uh, you can approach uh, Christy as a group if that would be easier for you to, to do that and to, to look at um, the, the, the mass number of people in one area who are interested in this. So we will do that. Uh, so thank you very, very much to everyone for being on the call with us today. Um, CHRA's next webinar is October 11th, and we'll be looking at insights on housing tra trajectories for newcomers and refugees. On November 17th, we're looking at how housing policy benefits from a socioeconomic perspective. And on December 13th, our webinars on driving new housing supply across a range of affordability options. And you can check out our upcoming webinars on our website at chra-achru.ca forward slash programs. So thank you very much. And as I said, today's presentation will be made available on our website in the coming days. So please do check back soon. Thank you all and goodbye for now. Thank you.